Here we go, I'm back at it again with a few more relatively obscure progressive death metal riffs. This week they're from the super dark and heavy but also oddly catchy and quirky Taking My Body Apart by Sculptured. <laughs> I remember finding out about this album from an ultimateguitar.com column called This Month in Metal when Embodiment came out in 2008. Where did that column go? I found a lot of good music through it as a blossoming metalhead. In any case, I'm going to talk about the first three riffs from this song, which do a lot of cool stuff to straddle the line between predictable and unpredictable, and between harmonically stable and harmonically unstable. The first riff starts with two things that are pretty common. Common enough that they have pretty well established names, so what the heck, let's use those names. The rhythmic pattern in the guitar, which is in 4-4 but grouped as 3 plus 3 plus 2 eighth notes, is called a tricio. <laughs> This shows up all the time in all sorts of popular and rock and metal music. The other thing is harmonic. It's this thing where the harmony goes from some minor chord to a major chord, a major third below. In this case, we're going from C sharp minor to A major. <laughs> Riemannian theory, which is a popular recent branch of fancy music theory, this movement and its reverse are called an L transformation. It's a cool little harmonic motion because there's only a half step difference in one voice between the notes of these two chords. So in this case we have uh, C sharp, E, G sharp, and the only difference between that and an A chord is the G sharp goes to A, so C sharp, E, A. These L transformations are super common wherever you hear your harmony, whether that's in metal, in pop, in film music, You name it. So anyway, so far we have a thoroughly solid Tresio L transformation riff in C sharp minor, which if we just left it at that would sound pretty conventional. Instead, this catchy, recognizable musical material gets a couple of weird endings that both warp the metric feel, so each ending is six quarter notes long instead of the 4-4 four four that we've been in, and they also warp the harmonic feel by introducing a bunch of notes that are jarringly outside of C sharp minor. <laughs> of things going off the rails at the end of phrases continues into the second riff. Here we get four measures of that same harmonic move, that same L transformation between C sharp minor and A major, with organ arpeggios blending into a little guitar melody. Everything is thoroughly consonant up until this point. <laughs> The second part of the riff, on the other hand, is one of the most out there, bewildering, dissonant things I've heard in metal. The metric shape is expanded, again, we might expect this phrase was going to last for another four measures, where instead there's an extra measure of 6-4 tacked on to the end of those four measures, uh, and the guitar melody goes so outside harmonically. It feels like each note just gets more dissonant, as if they chose each one to clash as much as possible with what came before and what the other guitar is doing. I love it, and I think this effect is heightened because it comes as such a contrast to the more tonally stable uh, first part of the riff.
finally, the third riff is not only a certified banger, but also has some more cool harmony stuff. So again, we're moving from C sharp to A, except now instead of it just an A major triad, uh, we have an A diminished chord uh, with a B up on the top. So that B is also not only not part of the chord, but it's also not part of the C sharp minor scale that we've been mostly in. <laughs> third and fourth measures of this block, the A and the A major chord moves up to A sharp a few times, so it's kind of flirting with becoming an A sharp diminished chord, uh, which is another cool way of changing chords by just moving one note by half step. So moving from A major to A sharp diminished, all you're changing is moving the A to the A sharp. <laughs> So anyway, here are those first three riffs. So I think I've done at least a little bit to describe my experience of this passage, which as one of my mentors has pointed out is an honest day's work in music theory. I originally characterized it as dark, catchy, and quirky, and I argued that it manages to evoke this kind of very specific vibe in part by having these recognizable frameworks, so the Tresio, the L transformation, the 4-4 four, four riffs, uh, which are all things that we can easily latch onto, but these kind of normative, recognizable things end in unexpected ways. They all get kind of twisted by their ends, and this is all in the context of the very dark lyrics and concept of this album. So in other words, we get something that sounds kind of sweet and familiar, but always kind of sours in a sinister way. It's a very cool, very death metal effect. Anyway, thanks for watching, and if you are unfamiliar with this album, what are you waiting for? Go check it out!